Let us continue to listen to God's message for us today. What should our church do? It's a recent sermon series of messages. It's the most important core value of our church. We have already discussed three important values. Uh, let's have a quiz. What is the first one? Intimacy with God. It's one of the things that our church pay much attention to. We want you to have very intimate and direct relationship with God. For we don't want you to be a Sunday Christian. That each one of us may be a Christian that will shine forth as the light and soul of the world. And by your life, you can go about to help change the world. The second value well, got Bible We need to be deeply rooted in God's truth. This is a generation that does not believe in absolute truth. However, we believe that in this world there is an absolute truth. Bible is our absolute truth. No matter what the world will say, whatever the other people will say, we should say what the Bible teaches us to say. Even if the world will be against us, but what the Bible say, for example, for example, things and marriage. The same sex marriage. If you're against, maybe others will criticize you and will blame you to be a narrow-minded person. But I'm tell you, if the Bible says it's incorrect, then it's wrong. May God help us. If you will not know the word of God, may I ask you, what's the standard for right and wrong? This generation changes. God's Truth will never change. We need to be established in the truth of God. Third, very good. Family oriented. It's a church. We are a church that put emphasis on a family. For we know something very important. God looks at the family as a single unit. And it doesn't view us individually. We're so self-centered. We often talk about what belongs to us. Go on, right, go on, right, go on, right. You're right. And we ended up being self-centered. Family is a unit, a single unit. For God looks at us a uh, family as a single unit. So they get it. So remember that. If the family is healthy, then the church will be healthy. If the family is weak, then the church will be weak as well. We need to use time to build up each family. This morning, as we look at the fourth value, life on my discipleship. This is the discipleship. Is a fourth important core value of our church. Remember that. Behind each person, there are two lives. The first life is the life that we live in the present world. And the second life, the life that we expect to live. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Now we're looking at our first life. Yet we are not satisfied. Because in my life, there's another aspiration. There's another desire. I hope to live another life. And there's a movie. A movie several years ago. It's called The Falling Down. And the main character or main actor 
His name William. William 沾滿華衣，伊嘅生活，伊嘅生命。William was not satisfied with his life and the way how he lives. 沾 disappointed. He was so disappointed. 特你裝神這樣大字。For every day he will do the same thing. 啲 office 裝神這工作。Go to the office and to do the same work. Every day notice 神這樣大字。And he's been going through this routine for many days. 你講嘅生活，生活，生命完全冇意思。He considered. That his life is meaningless. Until one day, he uh want to have some breakfast. He took a breakfast, uh, this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 fast food at night. And he entered a fast food to have his breakfast. He also took a this 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 And he kept on insisting he wanted to have some breakfast. No, 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 no breakfast. So uh, he was told that there's no more left. But he insisted. And yet he insisted. I just want some breakfast. William wanted to have some breakfast. He got to get, but no manager to come. And the crew asked the store manager to come out. He sent to get request. William made the same request. I just want some breakfast. To have some breakfast. I saw him no breakfast. And uh, the the store manager apologized. But I want some breakfast. But William insisted. No. And William could not stand it anymore. He pulled out his gun. Pointed to the manager. And pointed it to the manager. I just want some breakfast. And he demanded to have his breakfast. Of course, uh, the other uh, customers they wanted to uh, uh, leave the place. But William repeat, repeat, some chicku way. William repeated his same demand. I just want some breakfast. 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 In your life, what do you really need? You may be dissatisfied with your life. You are not satisfied with your life. For you know that. I need to live a better life. May I ask? In the deepest part of your heart, what kind of a life do you wish to live? Matthew chapter four eighteen twenty. In Matthew four eighteen to twenty, this is Yahshua who tells us here the this gospel. These verses are the call of Jesus, uh, Jesus to two brothers. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. One day, while Jesus was strolling along the seashore of Galilee, he saw a pair of brothers. Beyond that, Jesus saw the deeper aspiration in the heart of these two brothers. For these two fishermen. They did not plan to lead their entire life being fishermen. Both of them believed and trusted in the Lord Jehovah. Both of them wanted to do more things for the kingdom of God. And yet, no one was there to help them. They do not know how to go about doing it. When Jesus came along, Jesus immediately saw the. Longing in their heart, and Jesus called both of them to come and follow him. And he Jesus promised them that they will be fishers of men. Jesus saw the deep desire in these two men's heart. As both of them immediately leave what they are doing, they left behind the boat, their net. In order to follow Jesus, if you pay attention to what Jesus told these two brothers, the first one, come, follow me. And the second statement, I will make you fishers of men. And by these two statements, 
生命及生命门徒嘅婚姻。It began the life on life discipleship。主嘅门徒有三件最重要嘅特特点。There are three characteristics of the Lord's disciple. Number one, first， 是你嘅头壳，你嘅头壳理性嘅接受。You should accept it with your brain or with your mind, yes, rationally. Yes, when Jesus invited both of them to come and follow him, he made a challenge to their mind. You need to leave behind your present environment in order to go to a new environment. As humans, We dislike leaving what you used to do in our old environment. For we consider that as our comfort zone. Things that we do every day. The car that we drive, going to the same direction. We are so comfortable. If you are asked to leave this place so that you may follow another one. It will give. It will pose a new challenge. That's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's why when Jesus said, "Come and follow me," that's When Paul was in his old age, Paul told his uh, uh, brother Timothy, "I know whom I believe it." Dear church, imagine, just imagine when you're about to leave this world. Can you confidently tell your descendants, your grandchildren, that your grandfather or your grandmother knows who he be, he or she believes in? If you're not even sure of who you are believing in, Chairman, may I ask? What are you preaching? So, may, uh, may the Lord help us. That as disciples of the Lord, we need to be very clear in our mind. Whom we believe in. Number two, second, your salvation acceptance, acceptance in your heart level. That's why I will make you. That's why I will make you. I will make you. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. This is salvation of salvation. It's the great change in your life. No person can change another person. Tai Tai, wife. Please do not hope that you can change your husband. Do not change your children. Because you will never be able to change them. You may continue with your grumbling and your nagging. And yet, he or she will not change. Only the Holy Spirit can change a person. It's not the work of any man. I will make you. God will hold you to it. If you're willing to accept the challenge of God, follow Jesus. Then your life will begin to change. Remember that. It's not that you. Follow Jesus after you have changed. It is a it is a Gunde Yaso Yao Kaisi Kaiben. But it's only when you start following Jesus that you can begin to change. He just say, "Hey, I'm not believing Yaso." Many people say that I cannot believe in Jesus. I'm not even sure. Because I still cannot understand. I'm not even sure. I'm not yet clear. You're not even sure. I'm not even sure. You'll never be clear, and you'll never. Be, uh, be able understand. to understand. But I don't see now. It's only when you believe in. You can't do it. It's only when you start following. You just man, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Then gradually you begin to understand everything. Life is like that. That's the way with your life. Third, third, there's a transformation in your life. Your daily living, daily life, a change. When you did a thing, what happened? I will make you fisher of men. May I ask you this question? Fisherman. Fisherman. And fisher of men. And fisher of men. What's the difference between the two? Fisherman. 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 Fisherman.
分別就得咯。Being a fisherman and fisher of men， 其實答案就真簡單。The answer is very simple。獵奇人 ，fisherman， 是將活嘅變做死嘅。Will catch something live and turn it to dead。這個魚就真活啊！ The, the fish that they caught will be alive, and it's in good order. Then after you caught that fish, the fish will eventually die. That's why the living fish will end up dead. That's the way with the fisherman. While fisher of men will have a contrary. It will change something dead into something alive. Ephesians chapter 2, Apostle Paul identified it very accurately because we are dead in our sins and transgressions. Before you even believe in the Lord, before I became a Christian, I'm a spiritual dead man. I'm dead, insensitive, not interested in any spiritual matters. I'm very interested in sinful matters. I know how to lie. I know how to steal. And yet, I'm unaware that I've been committing these sins. Only when I accepted Jesus and God gave me a new life, that the dead will now live and become alive and lead a born again life. The Bible says that you are now a new creation, a new creature. The old is past, and the new has come. We are now beginning a new thing. Look at me. As a disciple of the Lord, your mind should change. And that's with the brain. It's the, the mind of an apostle or a, a disciple. When your life is changed, the heart of a disciple. And once the life is changed, it will be manifested with the hands and works of a disciple. A true disciple will have the change of the mind, the heart level, and even to the life. The work will show the change. And then you'll become a disciple. It's a very clear mission that God has given a church. And yet, the great challenge lies ahead of us. Just imagine, you want to change the whole person it's not an easy task. It's a great challenge. And yet you're willing. CBCP Church is willing to accept this challenge. That our church became a disciple-making church. Many years ago, I don't know if you're still around. In one of the Sunday worship services, I played this game with the congregation. It's called the one word game. It's a very simple and easy game. If I will say a word, please respond with a singular for word. Example, for example, Starbucks. Come on, come on. Very good. You're so good. Starbucks, coffee, Toyota. Very good. You are killing them. Rolex. Watchers. Very good. Imelda. Very good. Sure. Go get an international. Very good. Correct. Church. <laughs> Church. You know what's the problem? No, no. You go go away. See, John. Whenever we talk about the church, we have different opinions. People might immediately say, Church, worship, church, fellowship, church, love, church, visitation, church, Different people will have different interpretation and understanding of the meaning of a church. We cannot focus or gather all the resources of the church and focus in one point. Let me tell you, Gawai should be discipleship. The church, only discipleship and no other answer. Why? 
If you ask why, that's what Jesus said. Great commission, great commission. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. If you look at these two verses, four seemingly verb appeared. Go. The first is go. And the second one is to make disciples. The third one is to baptize. This is a teaching. And fourth is to teach. And these four words that appeared like a verb. If you look at the original context in the Hebrew, Greek, then you will know that uh, there's only one verb. And the rest are participles. In order for the word to accomplish the action, Chairman, may I ask, which among the four is the real verb? Okay, then let's get you go. Okay? Go, 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 go. Who said it's go? One. Who said it's to make disciples? More people raise their hands. Baptize. How about baptism? Teaching. How about teaching? Those who do not raise their hands. Let me tell you, only one word. QTD. Make disciples. Go. To help you to bring others to become a disciple. Unless you go out, who are you looking for as your disciple? After the person becomes your disciple, after they believe in the Lord, then you baptize them. That they may belong to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet you need to teach these people. So teaching them. That's why it's teaching. So it's a great commission. In the Great Commission, there's only one verb. For there's only one commandment of God. Make disciples. Unless the church can make other uh, people to become a disciple of the Lord. In just like going to Starbucks, what do you do there? Coffee. Just drink coffee. You go, sorry. Now we make coffee. If Starbucks will tell you that we no longer sell coffee, you what? what do you purchase? Now we show my. Maybe you'll buy show my. Do you buy your Starbucks? We show my. And then you'll go to Starbucks for your show my. No, 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 no. That's the God will not make disciple. If the church. Will not make disciples. So it's Starbucks, more coffee, Toyota, more car. It's just like Starbucks without coffee, Toyota, not producing cars. May the Lord help us. Many churches they use different methods. They gave different definitions for disciples. I want you to first think about this question. Discipleship, take a low mate, get get go, take an ultimate goal. What is the end result, the ultimate goal of discipleship? If you want others to be a disciple, where will you bring this person to? If you do not know yourself, it's just like a blind leading another blind. You need to be very, very clear before you help a person and bring him to the end result. Let me tell you, discipleship ultimate goal is Christ likeness. The ultimate goal of discipleship is Christ likeness. That the Christian will grow and become more and more like Christ. La la la, sing so. More mature. More like Christ. Na chiang ki to. May the Lord help us. Many new parents often they love to do this action. Three months or six months or nine months. After the baby is three or six or nine months, 
the the parents will probably bring their baby child dedication for child dedication. But the parents will often like to ask the question. Pastor, but these parents will often like to ask the question. Pastor, who do you think the baby looks like? Who is the mother? Looks like the father or the mother. Let me tell you. I honestly tell you. And honestly. After looking at the baby for a long time, the baby neither looks like the father nor the mother. And you say, "Yeah." Then you ask, "Who does he or she look like?" The infant looks like a baby. Long long baby, same. All babies look the same. But I really admire this kind of man. And yet, I admire. I really admire people like. You don't go. Look at me. Look at me. Mouth too, chin too, long. The eyes look like the father. The nose, the mouth, and the lips, and like the grandmother, and so good at identifying. We really will admire these people. But I have no skill, and yet I don't have the gift or the talent. I look at them, they look like a baby. And after looking, and after looking for a long time, I could not differentiate nor distinguish. But I tell you, but I tell you this. When this baby will be six years old, when this baby will be six years old. Twelve-year-old child, twenty-year-old adult. Then I'll let you know who he or she will look. One time, a Sunday school children. So I said hello. And not long thereafter, a sister came up. Okay, okay, Gong. I told this sister. This is a boy. Is she your daughter? I only know that. How do you know? I am Sang Bin. I'm not a girl. Both of you look alike. Have the same appearance. So I'm going to get caught. I'm caught. And you may think that I'm so good, I could easily identify. Gawe. Your church. But then, since you are a Christian, after you become a believer, then this is a spiritual baby. We began our journey as a spiritual. Then, no change your gait. We do not look like Christ. Then, the world around us no different. No different. Not much difference between. Us and people of the world. Because we are just new believers. And yesterday I even played mahjong. And today I've stopped. And now I start reading the Bible. And yet the way how you act or behave does not seem to be much different. Does not seem to be much different. Become a disciple of Jesus. If you really want to become a disciple of Jesus. Up to a certain point in time, your life should behave more and more like Christ. But, don't see. Pay attention. Spiritual life. 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 Spiritual You may remain as a spiritual infant. This is God's number two problem. And that's the big problem behind the church at Corinth. First Corinthians three one to two, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Paul says. Told them that I gave you milk. I did not give you solid food. No problem. For all babies started by drinking milk. Not a baby would begin his or her life with solid food. For they do not have teeth or tooth yet. But the problem is. Up to this very moment. You you are not yet. Uh, taking solid food because you have not grown up. And this is our problem. And this is our problem. We submit. Why? Why is it that after you become a believer, you cannot grow up? Because you have not embarked on real discipleship making actions. Dear church, it's not that we have not begun this discipleship. Every Sunday we we get involved in discipleship making. Then through worship, through our worship, through message, through the word of God, the messages, life small group, through the small group, Bible study group, talking fun, men fellowship, women fellowship, men or women fellowship, youth group. We make disciples. We make disciples. But. 
。出来嘅结果唔是真明显。We could not see the very clear result。那么嗰度真侪人就 mature 起来。We do not see people getting more mature。You don't know why。那唔知为什么？咱真骨力去做。Even if we exert so much effort， 但是恁的 effort 出，恁的 effort 无达到，恁的恁的 result。These efforts have not produced the desired result。但是 by God's grace， 上帝恩典。两千十三年 ，Year 2013， 我甲四十几个同工去参加菲律宾头一摆的 Discipleship Congress。Together with 40 other co-workers， all of us。Attended the first discipleship making congress. And we discovered the reason behind it. We lack something. Intentional. And we lack the intention. Then make disciple. If we want to make disciple. Then say no intention. Okay, make disciple. But we have not done this intentionally. Then chong long chong long, kaki ki lai, kaki ki lai. We did a lot of things, and we expect they will come up naturally. Come to Shang Day. And praise God. God has reminded our church that we need to engage in intentional activities in making a disciple. But how? But you know, we don't know. Then we held it. And God is so amazing. When we have the willingness to do, the ministry of God came upon us. One church from United States was willing to help us. That's the perimeter church. And this church, the perimeter church. Because none but me. Even if we do not know this church. But in this very chaotic environment, we are united. But under a very amazing and circumstance, we get to meet meet them. Meet the story short. To cut the long story. The great day they come. Within a few years. It the Atlanta Bay like who they build this all time. They sent people from Atlanta to this place to train us, to teach us, and to develop us. So that we understood the meaning of a life-on-life discipleship. Praise God. You know many church? They look at discipleship making as a curriculum. So that's why they have ten sessions or ten classes of discipleship making. After you've gone through these ten courses, you are a disciple. Then you can become a disciple. You can make disciple now. And you you can go out and make disciple. Come on, come on, come on. Disciple is the mid. What is the meaning of disciple? Number one, head. From your head. Number two, heart. Number three, hand. Right. This is based on curriculum. Only the Jigga Sawzai. If you do this based on curriculum, you'll just remain at the head or mind level. Right? Chairman, may I ask? You have taught now seven lessons. After completing these ten lessons, your life will change. Will that change your life? Your life will change. Will that change your life? 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 Will that change your Genesis up to Revelation. Your life will not change. You'll just end up as another Pharisee. In order for your life to change, there should be a life that will affect your life. In reality, discipleship making is similar to a system. It's the same. What system? What system? It's similar to the apprenticeship. Apprenticeship, this is a type of discipleship. Sang, sang, sang. The apprenticeship system is similar to the discipleship system. Only one difference. There's only one difference. Later, I'll show you. 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 During that time, the economic situation of the world was not good. Those who can afford to go through school are well off. And many would just end up completing elementary studies. Those who can afford to graduate from high school are better. And those who ended up with college education are better. Are considered the best. And that's why many people stop after they completed their elementary education. 
And then what do they do? They're just 12 or 13 years old. 13 years old kids. What do they end up doing? At that time, they will seek or consult a master or a teacher. Depending on what profession you want to, for example, if okay. you want to be a barber, you, then you go look for a master barber. If you want to repair automobiles, you look for a master mechanic. If you want to bake bread, then you should uh, follow a master baker. Then for the next three years, for three years, during the first year, the person will not teach you anything. You'll just end up being the helper or a servant of this master. However, you need to live with this person. You need to eat with that master. Whatever the master will ask you to do, you should do. After one year, and a year later, if the master dim, a mm. person to be appropriate. Mm, okay, okay. And he'll be willing to teach you a bit and ah. teach you how to cut a hair or how to make a no, bag of bread. Oh, and then you'll be asked to do by yourself yeah, as the master okay, okay, okay. observes um, dum, 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 dum. and correct whatever mistakes. After three years, three years later, no. after you learn the trade, then you'll be considered a graduate. And you can go about opening your own shop or store. Is this the same as discipleship? It's very similar. Your life influencing, affecting another person's life. But there's a difference. If you will follow the apprenticeship system, the most important thing is, is your learning the master or the teacher's skill. Yes, what kind of a person is? Okay, okay. It doesn't matter to you. If your master is a bad person, uh, uh, a womanizer, because uh, he loves women, or a drunkard, or a gambler, with a bad temper, but, don't see. Oh, this is the number one. He's the number one bread maker. Do you want to learn? Of course. Because I'm not following, copying your life. Skills. I'm just after your skill set. Yet, discipleship. in discipleship, that's not the skill that you're after. It's the life that you're after. Learn the life of the disciple. Because there's only one life that can affect and influence another life. May God help us. Misunderstanding. As many people have this misconception of discipleship, we tend to view discipleship as a series of lessons or course. Do you want to join discipleship? Sorry, sorry. Uh, maybe you'll say, I'm sorry. I don't have time. Of course you don't have time. Meeting, man. Because you have a lot of meetings. Oh, yeah, so, 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 you have many ministries. Ah, sorry, sorry, so that's why you don't have time. I'm sorry to tell you. Discipleship, Discipleship is not a series of lessons. It's not a series of meetings. Yes. Yes, though we have a curriculum. Yes. Though we meet. But these are not the most important. The most important thing is a person should be able to influence and affect another person's life. I tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, you have already started your own discipleship journey. You know why? This morning as you wake up, how do you talk to your helper? Do you shout your helpers at home? You know who are observing? Your children are Your daughters so everything. When you're engaged in business transactions, if you lied a lot, you know who are, who's watching? Your child is observing. Your daughter 
sees all of this. If you're quarreling with your spouse, you know who's observing? Your child saw everything. You began this discipleship process with your son or with your daughter. And in, in the future, should this girl grow up to be another person's wife, you know who she will behave like? Even if you're unaware. You may say, where did I learn about Oh, it, I know from my mom. Now you're discipling your children. Even if you do not start it intentionally doing it. Because you have not started with an intention, all your examples ended up the bad examples. Because you do not intentionally embark on this. If for the sake of discipling your child, I a good example for them. you want to set a good example. Even if you started without good intention. Because each one of us lead a worldly life. Everybody. Every one of us. The worldly life likes to enjoy. Dislike reading the Bible. But if you know you need to set a good example, if you can ask my child, every morning as I wake up, they'll see me opening my Bible and read the Word of God to have my devotion. Whether they see it or not, I set example for them. I set this example for them. May God help us. It's not a matter of whether you like it or not, but you're already doing it. Discipleship making should begin in a small group. You know why? We submit. Because you need to find an accountability partner. You'll never be a disciple of God by yourself. You know why? We submit. Because individually, you'll dislike doing these things. Look at this. If I'm walking by myself, I walk very fast. Because I'm walking by myself, then I can control my speed. However, if you want to walk with a longer time, you cannot walk by yourself. You need to bring a companion. Don't you know that? Then you walk together. If you walk faster, la, 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 then the other one will so follow. As both of you walk so together, even if you started slow, you can go farther. May I ask, how far do you want to go? How many years do you want to walk? You know, to be the disciple of the Lord is a lifetime process. Try doing it by yourself. Then you'll find out you cannot do it. If both of you are doing it, you can talk together, you can encourage one another, then you'll find out you're walking farther and farther. In our church, there are two types of groups. First is the live group. In the past, we called it a small group. We are not just changing name for the sake of serving life together. We want that people share their lives together in the life group. Come to think of it. If a person, I have so many problems. I have problems with my marriage. I quarrel a lot with my spouse. Financially, I have problems. Relationship, I have problems with my son. I have problems at work. I bring a heavy baggage of problems to my life group. And yet, I'm prohibited from saying anything. And in the life group, people will ask me, Are you okay? How will you answer? What? Praise God. If you say I'm okay, that's not yet an experienced answer. Because you're a Christian, usually you answer like this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Are you really praising God? You bring all your problems to your life 
the same problem you'll bring back home. So what is your life group? May the Lord help us. Pray that you'll find your accountability partner, your your, your, somebody that can help you, that can encourage you and challenge you. And something that our church put much emphasis on. And not just eating food, uh, laughing and talking in the life group. And People who will bring 10 problems to the life group and end up bringing these problems back. It's not a life group, that's a gathering. It's a social gathering. May the Lord help us. There's a second task that we need to do. Group. It's a journey group. It's a different discipleship group where members will have to have a different commitment. And the number should not be big. It's about four to five persons in the journey group. The same gender. The most important thing is members are of the same gender because each one of us need to open up our life deeper. As males shared to other males, females to females, as all of you experience your life together. Remember that if you're willing to be the disciple of the Lord, if you're willing to train another person to become the disciple of God, you, I promise you, sooner or later, sooner or later you, belong to a journey group. you will join a joining group. Yeah, it's open group. Because it's not a, an open group. It's by selection. It's by selection. We don't want to waste each of our time. If you're willing, God knows. Let me tell you a testimony. Let me share with you this testimony. Initially, when we started the discipleship movement, it's not a program. Because program will have a start and an end. Movement until the task is completed will continue on. One day, if I'm no longer in CBCP, this movement that I've started will continue on. Three years ago, I started my own journey group. Together with four Friday morning. Every Friday morning, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., we meet. And then every week, and I will uh, spend a one on one time with one member of the group every week. And throughout the last three years, I've spent the time to, with this group. Three years later, two groups are out to multiply on their own. And this year, I began another new journey group. Three brothers meet regularly every Friday in my office. Morning. Every Friday morning. And then every week, I meet with one brother. And every week, I spend time to meet an individual brother. Because I want to spend more time on this task. And I will reduce my other ministries. Yeah, let's just keep the main thing, the main thing. We need to be focused and keep the main thing, the main thing. It's a very important value of our church. Dear church, you should be very clear and understand more about this discipleship. Not that other ministries are not important. But remember that without discipleship, it's just like Starbucks without coffee or Toyota without a car. And then everything will be lost. Imelda, shoes. All the shoes will be gone. May God help us. Discipleship is a very important value of this church. And we have this very unique slogan. Think big. Think big. Start small. And go deep. So then think big. We need to think big. That all brothers and sisters of the church of Jesus. should become disciples of think Jesus. Bigger. And as we think bigger, that we may help other churches to become a discipleship making church. We start small. But we begin with a small. Imagine, Imagine the three years ago when we started this. I think many of you are unaware. But slowly and gradually, God's work 
begin so the progress. It's the fourth value of our church. Remember that. Intimacy with God. Bible rooted. Uh, family, family oriented. And life on life discipleship. These are the four values of our church. Next Sunday, I thought the fifth one. We'll talk about the fifth one. Servant leadership. Which is servant leadership. May the Lord help us. Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that you have given us this good opportunity to be a member of a spiritual home that you provided us the avenue to learn from the great master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you have provided us also faithful and dedicated servant, the Lord, who journey with us in our life's journey. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness that many times we thought we could do it on our own. And many times we've turned back on invitations and we've turned back on the encouragement of our brothers and sisters. Allow us the opportunity to learn from your word, to be deeply rooted, and to grow in our relationship, both in the intimate and personal way with you. And allow us to also shine as light and salt of our family, so that the people of the world will see our good deeds, and hear our words, and know the God who has called us out of darkness into this wonderful light. As we end this morning's worship, May your word go with us as your Holy Spirit continue to touch our hearts and mind so that one day we become more and more like you, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We pray this in our mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.